opportunity for our board to hear testimony from the community on the annual school review recommendations. So commissioners, please feel free to ask clarifying questions as you hear these testimonies, that's fine. Um, and at this point, Christian, um, I wanna thank you for coordinating the community speakers for us so you can take it from here. Thank you, Commissioner Richardson. Uh, first, I'd ask everyone, please uh, mute and turn your videos off so we can allow uh, whoever's speaking to be uh, fully present on the screen. Uh, I have the pre-signed up lists and uh, everyone will have five minutes to uh, five minutes to comment. Uh, and we may have an opportunity for more comment uh, afterward. Our first speaker is Kia Reed, and I see you in the guest section. Are you uh, ready? Uh, yeah, sure, that's no problem. Okay, you have five minutes. Okay, hello, my name is Kia Reed. Um, I currently have two students enrolled at Lockerman Bundy um, as of next year, should the school still be open, I'll have my third son um, will be joining uh, Lockerman Bundy. I'm sorry, can you hear me? It seems like my microphone's being weird. I hear you just fine. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I spoke at the last uh, committee meeting, meeting that they had in regards to um, the closing of Lockerman Bundy and I voiced my opinion on, basically my concern is the staffing of how to go about keeping, ensuring that the staff is still very much so a part of the school. Um, I can't really speak for anybody else, but I can, as far as me and my children and the, I want to say four years that my children have attended Lockman Bundy, we've become a family. Um, Kimberly Hill as the principal, I've seen her go above and beyond for these students. Um, the, the faculty, her, her, the, the parents of the students, I've seen, uh, Ms. Torrance, the school nurse. You know, even if it's something minor when it comes to my children, they make sure that as their mother, I'm, you know, I, I know what is going on. Um, this past year with covert hitting, they have been the biggest support backbone system that my children and I could have ever asked for. Um, I, I was unemployed. I was struggling with virtual learning. I, I'm still technically going through uh, a lot of of issues, but the one, the blessing that Lockerman Bundy has been to my family, I cannot put into words. The teachers go above and beyond, despite the fact of me having internet troubles, of ensuring that that my kids are a well ahead of their, you know, what I'm saying that they're, they're still able to be a part of their class without actually being into their class. They call after school when they're supposed to be having time with their own families. They're taking time out of their day to sit with my children on the phone so that they can make sure that they're up to par as far as their schooling. Um, I, I don't really know much about Mary Ann Wintowin. I've been there, I've seen the school. I have no, you know, I don't think it's a bad school, but my concern as far as my children and, and Lockerman Bundy is the, after everything they've been through this year, I think it's just, it's, 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 it's hard to ask children to give up a, a second home, the only home that they've known, the only teachers and, and, and staff that they've known, and kind of throw them into the unknown. Like I said, um, I have no issues with, with Mary Ann Wintelene. It's no disrespect to any of the staff or, 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 or the, the school itself. My major concern is, like I said, for me and my family, Miss Kimberly Hill, Miss Norris, Miss Torrance, I specifically for teachers, Mr. Radicky and Miss Ponte, these and it's it's more than just them, but these people, especially this past couple of months, they have gone above and beyond to, to for my family, for my children. And I just I, I can't I can't I, I just want to make sure that everybody knows what a blessing that Lockerman Bundy is to us in this community because without them, a lot of us would struggle without food or struggle without resources. They, these, the staff and, and it, it Lockerman Bundy in a whole, I'm sorry, I'm getting 
a little emotional, but Lockerman Bundy is a is a godsend right now to a lot of people, myself included. And I just I, I, I wanna do whatever I can to make it be known of how what the staff is about, what the school is about, and how much how important they are to us. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Uh, and just to um, clarify, uh, we have a total of nine people signed up, but if anybody did not get a chance, an opportunity to speak and wants to kind of sign up for the floor, you can reach out to Lindsay Anderson. Uh, and I believe she's putting the information to the speaker uh, in the, uh, ch uh, the chat box. So again, if you didn't get an opportunity to sign up in advance, uh, there'll be an opportunity to speak. Um, next, we have uh, Naktia Green, are you on? Naktia, if you're on your phone, you can hit star six. I see someone talking is, oh, hold on one second. <laughs> Okay, we'll come back. Um, next, uh, Kimberly G, are you on? Kimberly G. And again, if you're on a phone, you can hit star six. All right, uh, Aaron Holly, are you are you on? Aaron Holly. Okay, uh, Kiara Trusty. Kiara Trusty, are you are you available and on? Okay, we'll come back. Uh, Ms. Marnell Coleman, I do see you in the guest uh, attendees box. Marnell Coleman. Yes, I'm home. Okay, you have uh, five minutes. <laughs> Okay, so my name is Monel Coleman. Um, I am a current parent as well as I had a, my child graduated from Lockerman Bundy. Uh, she's now in high school. So my biggest concern is transitioning. I am a teacher as well, but not at Lockerman Bundy, but at another school. And I can tell you with this whole transitioning with this Zoom, the kids has already a, has not been able to adjust to that. And for y'all to want to close the school next year, my child has one more year in that school. And for y'all to have to have the transition from Zoom to another school to transition out of elementary school is a, a bit much, I think. And um, like I say, also, Lock and Money has, like I said, the lady before spoke, has done so much for the kids, for the parents, for the community. Mrs. Hill has always been there to help out with anything the parents need. I have needed, my child has needed. She has supported us so much. And I just feel like, you know, Shutting the school down is going to like really, it's going to really hurt everybody. Like we love Locker Man Bundy. We love the staff. We love everybody. Like I said, Mr. Radeke and Ms. Ponce is my child teacher for like going on three years now. And they was also my oldest child teacher. And they teach these kids. They love these kids. They, you know, do so much for these kids. And like I said, I just feel like, you know, transitioning with these kids in and out into a different school is going to really hinder the children, not so much help the children. And I thought that's what the schools are for, to help the children, to help the parents, to help the, you know, even with the staff. I just feel like, you know, it's got, has to be something else that can be done for these children not to, you know, be hindered by this 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 transition. Um, I don't know what other options there are. And like I said, my teachers, my children teacher, like I said, Mr. Ponte, I mean, Ms. Ponte and Mr. Radke, you know, they work with these kids. Even during the summertime, they still check on these kids. You know, they make sure they have what they need while they're on Zoom. If they fall behind, they call and check to make sure that the kids are getting back on track. You know, they they reward them, they support them in all kinds of ways or not. Like I said, I know my ch I have two children and one has already graduated from Lockerman Monday. My other child's supposed to graduate next year. And like I said, the transition, I just really hope it does not hinder her or not, but they are excellent at Lockerman Monday. And I really hope that we can find another way to 
resolve the situation without closing Lachlan and Bunny. That's really all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. Uh, and Ms. Anderson just put the sign up form in the chat uh, if you need, if you're interested in signing up uh, to speak from the floor. Uh, next, we have Mr. Jerome Alexander. Jerome, I, I see you in the guest room box. Yes. Um, good evening, members of the board. Um, I come to you today to express my disagreement with the closure of Lachlan Bundy and subsequent consolidation with Marianne Winterland. Um, I am not a faculty member, nor am I a student parent. However, I am an alumni and supporter of Lachman Bundy. Uh, this school was the first place outside of my home where I felt loved, safe, and encouraged. Um, as a middle school student, I would walk back to Lachman Bundy to show my pre-K teacher my report cards because that's how great of an impact the teacher had on me. Um, I remember the honor I felt whenever I was selected to read the morning announcements or when my fifth grade teacher appointed me as a safety guard because she saw leadership inside of me before I did. Um, as an adult, I have supported ORCID's performances at Locker and Bundy. I've tutored there. I've contributed to school supplies. Um, I've been a guest speaker at a graduation ceremony. And in 2010, I started an annual green education field trip with Locker and Bundy as the primary partner. Um, if you actually go on Google Maps, you'll see um, a picture of me with the kids um, and I'm grinning from ear to ear, and that basically shows, uh, is written all over my face how much I love this school. Um, so obviously I take this issue very personally, but I've also listed some pragmatic concerns outside of the more emotional side. Um, number one, in June 2021, the sentiment will be, congrats students, you've made it through COVID curriculum, but your school won't be here in September. And why make such drastic changes when we know that COVID has majorly affected student achievement, post, um, I, I, I suggest maybe we can postpone a decision to close until the end of school year 2023, when this school will have had the opportunity to adjust to the new normal and give the school a chance to improve wherever you, you feel like there's failings. Um, number two, if the problem is a shrinking attendance, it's been proven that smaller size classrooms produce more intimate and safer learning environments and improved test scores. Uh, teachers are often overwhelmed in classrooms of nearly 25 students or more, and it's easier to supply smaller schools with instruments, school supplies, or in this case, laptops. Um, cost effectiveness and efficiency are not often justified for larger schools. So why not embrace that as an opportunity? Um, number three, the first thing we always hear about is how can we save money, but why are we always thinking about the penny pension possibilities when it involves our kids? There's a notable disregard for our students' social and psychological and overall educational development in suitable learning environments, and it's always concealed under the concern of state funding. Yes, consolidation may save money, but the concern should be what's really saving our kids. Close up the loopholes that the casino companies slip through that allowed them to contribute less to the education trust fund and correct public policy so that supplement that supplements gambling <laughs> contributions with the general fund. Uh, number four, the students already oh, endure poverty. Um, the students already endure poverty, drug trafficking, violent crimes, and much more. And now you're going to force them to bear with the removal of what is perhaps the most stable part of their community. Students are durable, but less adorable, sorry. Uh, they're durable, <laughs> but let's not exhaust their fortitude. We keep asking too much for these kids. Number five, if the board is concerned with the fact that Lachlan and Bundy doesn't meet 21st century building standards, then why couldn't renovations have started six months ago since we've been on COVID restrictions? Why not just spend on the necessary construction while the students have been off site for such an extended period of time. Um, number six, lastly, the closure plan states that the school building will be returned to the city. So does that mean it will join its diagonal neighbor, the, the old ice factory as yet another abandoned building to the neighborhood or because of the school's proximity to the West Baltimore uh, Mark train station, will the school building become part of some undisclosed gentrifying development plan? 
um, lastly, to conclude, I hope that my sentiments shared before you are not only taken into consideration, but actually provokes a new plan for ways that myself and others can help the school continue to do what it does best, educate, encourage, and love our students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Uh, next, I have an email I will read from Ms. Patricia Mack Preston. Yes! Come on, Mac Preston! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, dear board members, my name is Patricia Mack Preston, and I'm the Executive Director for Apply Time for Learning, which has been an affiliate organization of Marianne Winterling for five years. Our organization's mission is to close the achievement gap with children who are growing up in poverty using technology. Our all-volunteer group meets once a, one day a week to instruct students on a one-to-one -one basis using iPads. We collaborate with the kindergarten and first grade teachers to guide us in what skills need further instruction for each individual student. We have been able to address each student and target their learning support because the classrooms are smaller. Spending 20 minutes with each student has made a significant impact on their learning and has provided the teachers with valuable instructional information. If the schools merge together, we will need to decrease the time we spend with each student in order to meet with everyone. This will have a negative impact on our level of support for each student. While I'm sure there are other consequences to the merger, this is how it will influence our work and impact at Mary Ann Winterly Elementary. Sincerely, Patricia Mack Preston. Okay, next I'll be playing a video from Shaquan Bell. Just give me one moment. Can everyone see the video? I see it, yeah. Christian. Okay, I right, agree. This video is in regards to the board hearing that uh, will be occurring tomorrow. Um, on behalf of myself and my daughter, a lot of the Bundy Scholar, we're grief stricken to have learned that our school family may soon be torn apart. This is more than just a place of learning. This is a place to call home where the students are safe, which is the number one priority. Students are known by face and not just by name. Principal Hill, along with Ms. Tanisha, Ms. Torrance, and the late William, having nothing shy of a great inspiration. This is the village that they built a solid foundation. The school has not only provided resources to the kids, but also to the parents, from mobile tennis to Roberta House, providing the kids with grief counseling and, and uh, mentoring. Principal Hill has some of the best instructors, like Mr. Caution, who soon who just recently retired, uh, Ms. Wilkins, Ms. Fusco, who was new uh, to the school, and Ms. Ponte. The school has also been dedicated to award ceremonies, things like Donuts with Dad, Moms, also photography and field trips. Um, there are many schools in Baltimore City that have these wonderful activities. Um, awards alone show acknowledgement and its motivation to the children to keep them growing and excelling. Lockham and Bunny has also been featured on our local news station, WBAL TV, um, for many of its great accomplishments. This is a place where they may learn and fun, not only using the latest dances, but creating some of the hottest educational rhymes. The school has brought great awareness to bullying and encouraged the kids to respect and care for one another. Um, in closing, um, I'd just like to briefly show you my daughter is a scholar there. Um, she maintains um, a high average in math, science, and reading. Um, these are some of the certificates that she's received, the SWAG Award. Principal I'm Demora Crawford and I go to Lockton and Bunny Elementary School. When we got the message that Lockton and Bunny Elementary School was getting closed, it was very devastating. But I'm here to say my five years at Lockton and Bunny Elementary School was great. Let me explain. Ms. Hill makes learning fun. We have things that deal with depression for Roberta's house. We have so many more things. We we got we go on field trips to, to the aquarium. We have uh, ceremonies. We have dances. We have proms. It's so fun. It's Miss Hill makes learning fun. Basically, that's the what I'm saying. To the okay. 
So that was the end of that video. Uh, we reached the end of the public comment list. I'm going to return to uh, some people that, that was, signed up that we didn't hear. That was from. not the end of it. Sorry, uh, that was not the end of it. It was about another minute left. Demory uh, was giving testimony on the school in Principal Hill. So that was not the end of it. It was about five minutes. So like a minute was cut off. And okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Give me, I got two different videos. So let me, sorry about that. That's on my end. Hold on. Yeah, it did feel like it cut, cut off, Christian. I was going to ask that. Uh, let's see. And Ms. Anderson, if you are listening and can have a longer version, if you could forward. I'm checking now. So Ms. Bell, the videos I received are still only two minutes and 30 seconds. I don't know if you just want to add something on the floor, if that's okay. Or okay, so, to... okay, so okay. I just want to send, okay. Um, Demore, you can go ahead and let me, um, give me one second, okay. You can go ahead and um, Okay, you want us to come back to you? No, we're ready. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, I mean, you have uh, two and a half minutes. Okay, go ahead, Demore. Uh, Lockman Bundy. All I have to say is that Lockman Bundy it shouldn't be closed because if you've been to Lockman Bundy, it's it's a like a it's a school of joy. You know, Miss Hill put her blood, sweat, and tears into the school. She puts everything into the school. She put she would spend her last dollar basically on the school. She puts everything into that school, and I know it's it's really hurting and you know depressed. I'm really depressed about. You cl a cl a the Baltimore City closing the school that has I, so I much know. love and support no. and support the home no. the homelessness and have transportation from home and back make sure the kids are safe and on one particular event there was a shooting near our school and some of the children were scared to walk home Miss Hill made it her business to be the lifeguard to be the um yeah the street guard and in the street, she, she, the crossing guard, she made it her business to be the crossing guard to um, cross the children across the street safely. So all, all I want to say is that Miss Hill is, she's, she, she's been like a mother to me and some of the students at Lockham and Bundy. That's all. Thank you. What are the challenges that y'all been through? Christian, um, if I could just jump in. Are, are you finished, Miss Bell? Because I want yes. you to. Yes. That's all. Just, Thank you. I want you to know that you did such a great job at really painting a real vivid picture for me um, as to the care that you received at your school. So I just wanted to thank you so much for, um, first of all, for your video, and we had the technical difficulties, but then you were brave enough to talk live and in person with us. So I just want to thank both you and your mom. Um, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Richardson. Um, My hand is up. Oh, Commissioner Bondima, you had a follow-up question? No, I just want to join with um, the, uh, Commissioner Richardson. I'm getting an echo. Can you, is there a reason why I'm getting an I echo? I don't hear an echo on my end. Um, I don't hear I don't hear one either, Michelle. I don't hear one. Oh, I'm hearing. I'm hearing it on my end. I just want uh, the young lady who just spoke. I just want her to know that we are listening, and we do care, and we and I'm so happy that she was able to present tonight. And thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Bondima. Did anybody else have any follow-up questions or no problem. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I'm gonna go back over, come back over the list. Uh, Nectia Green. Nectia Green, are you on? Okay, uh, Kimberly G. Kimberly G, are you on? Okay, uh, Aaron Holly. 
Aaron Holly, I see you in the guest list. Aaron Holly. I'm I'm here. Okay, great. You have five minutes. Okay, so thank you for a lot today. I had um, two children that were attending Lockham and Bundy. My daughter Autumn and my son Amir. Autumn no longer attends Lockham and Bundy, but that was not due to lack of anything that Lockham and Bundy had to offer her. Um, in, in particular, in specific, I just um, Autumn decided that she wanted to attend uh, an all-girls school for different reasons of her own. However, my son Amir, he does attend Lockham and Bundy. And I just want to communicate and convey that Locker and Bundy has really poured into my son. Uh, my son is eight years old. He started going there when he was in pre-K. Um, and the level of care and commitment that the school has had for him in particular, um, for a young young black boy attending a school in an urban area um, in West Baltimore, the the difference between him and any other child who don't succeed or make it in this in this city is the people who pour into him and speak life into him. And I can honestly say that coming into the school, my son had a speech impediment, um, which for years I acknowledged and tried to have someone identify his need and his care, but Lock and the Money took hold of that when I first conveyed that to them and he attended speech therapy for uh, several years after that um, so uh, you take this eight year this this young boy who had a speech impediment who didn't have any difficulties with learning but he um, he needed people to pour into him and encourage him and the teachers at Lock and the Bundy especially the math teachers um it opened him up and explored him to be able to express himself and communicate in ways that he didn't know that those gifts were in him. Uh, they really, really took the time into consideration for my son in particular, which is really makes a difference in this community. And the idea of closing Lockerman and Bundy uh, when he's had so much encouragement and so he leaves out of school, he's talking about his teachers, he's talking about how he's doing math on a fifth grade level and how they've taken time and consideration for him. They acknowledge him. They know they know me. They know his sisters. They know the new siblings that he has. Um, uh, him going to lock in my money initially was the issue of convenience for me because I work in the community uh, at the housing authority. So that was a big thing for me to be able to reach and convey and communicate with my children. And not only does Ms. Hill, the principal, the secretary, the nurse, they all communicate, they, they keep you informed. Um, I was just conveying with my sister that this school I know people like to run to different schools as far as charter schools or private schools, but this school really pours into my child. And that is the difference between going to any other school in the community. And I saw something along the lines of the attendance rate was low, um, the lack of funding, the building plans, and the the idea of closing Lockerman Bundy, which holds a significant amount of African American and urban urban children in the community and pushing them off into another school. I mean, I, the the idea is bamboozling to me because overcrowded schools has been an issue since I was in high school and in elementary school. And I'm just trying to figure out why don't we have a plan um, set aside for these children who are impacted especially during COVID, these, these schools are reaching out. I, 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 I know I'm the only per parent I know who hasn't had any issues with distance learning, who hasn't had any issues with the teachers communicating with them, who the teachers are informing you, who are keeping up with the children. I know once the pandemic hit, um, they actually sent pizza to my house for my daughter for perfect attendance. Um, and having honor roll. I mean, these are 
small and maybe trivial things to people who don't understand that education and pouring into African-American urban children makes the difference on the direction that they will go and take regardless of their circumstances. And I don't think that the Board of Education is really taking this thing seriously because this has been an ongoing issue for so long. Sorry to interrupt. You're at yeah. time. You can finish your thoughts. Okay. So I, I just really want I want the Board of Education to really sit and think about what this will do to these children that are impacted in these communities and these resources and having these these educators who actually care, which is a big difference, um, in closing and locking them by because at this um uh, at this age, we just can't afford to lose any more African-American urban children to their environment. And this, these situations are, are the pivotal points to determining what's going to happen in these young, young children's lives. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for your um, testimony. Uh, Kiera Trustee, are you on? Kiera, uh, sorry, there was, uh, there was feedback. Kiera Trustee, are you on? Okay, if I previously called your name and you uh, signed up, please just let us know. Oh, is somebody speaking? Okay, somebody need. And can everyone please mute your phones? I hear some kind of feedback. I'm not sure who it is. I'm not sure if you guys called my name. I was just letting you know that Nikita Green is on the phone. Oh, Miss Green. Okay, welcome. Yes, we did. Uh, you have five minutes. Okay. I feel like Lockham and Monday should not be closed because they have a lot of resources that help my child personally. Not only do he have one person to help him with his reading fluency, um, he has two. Hello? Oh. Um, what I was saying is that um, Lockham and Bundy has a lot of resources that helps my son, and I'm pretty sure it helps other people's children as well. Um, he has not only one, but he has two reading um he's into reading partners and he's also have a regular after school and they help him with reading as well it's helping with his fluency and building his confidence for him to be able to read on the second grade level um they always are in contact with me i'm in contact with them i'm very close with the principal the staff there in regards to my son's learning um if he's behind anything that i can do to help the support is there. I feel like they're not just a school for me. It's like a family. It's an extra family for me, and they give me that extra push and that strive to keep going, especially when it's involving my son and engaging him in his education to further him, to get him ahead and get him exactly where he needs to be. Closing that school down will really just put me in a bind because we build a relationship from pre-K and he's now in second grade. So closing it will really not only devastate me as a parent, but devastate him because he will gain, you know, a bond with the staff, his teachers, um, extra resources that they will brought outside of the school to come in and help kids who are behind with reading and things like that. Um, it really would mess me up, us up as a whole in the community. Thank you, Ms. Green. Did you, uh, was, did that conclude your comments or you had some more to add? That concludes my comments. Okay. Thank, thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Green. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have uh, two signups that, uh, from the floor. It is Catherine, Catherine Porter, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you. Um, 
I am a dual certified part-time teacher, uh, resource teacher in Baltimore City. Um, I'm dual certified in art and music. I've been teaching in the city. I've been working in the school system for 13 years, um, working with elementary students primarily. I, Lockerman Bundy is a dream school it, to my mind in terms of creative resources for the students. I realize that there's a lot of argument about Combining the schools would allow for the students to have more resources available to them, but I have found more resources available to students at Lockerman Bundy than any other school that I've been at of any size. Um, you can see, you can feel the love when you walk into the building. It's not the rhetoric of family is something that is felt and it's real. It's not just something that is said in school meetings and what have you. Um, you can see the evidence of the love in the students because they have such vibrant, curious minds and they're very confident and thoughtful and they're active. They know what they think. I've worked in schools where second graders have told me they don't have an imagination. And that's not at all the case at Lockerman Bundy. The students have a voice because there's space for their voice to be heard there because all of the adults in the building care for them so much. And I find it deeply disheartening that the bottom line always ends up being dollars and numbers and not the kids. It kind of breaks my heart, to be honest. I'm going to stop. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, Ms. Porter. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just very emotional about it, but thank you. No, I understand. Th thank you. Next. Uh, Ms. Maria Habicon, are you on? Ms. Habicon? It's it's Habakkuk, excuse me. I'm not sure if that's probably why she's not answering. It's Habakkuk. Habakkuk, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Habakkuk, apologies. If you're on a phone, uh, you can hit star six to unmute if, if you're not on the app. If that's a barrier, Ms. Habakkin. Okay, uh, that concludes our public comment for the evening. Uh, Ms. Alvarez, are you on? Uh, okay, did you still want to give a short presentation? Um, no, I think what I want to do is just give a short reminder okay. of the second opportunity um, for public comment on the. I I want to. There's a couple things I just want to make sure to highlight because I think some people in this meeting weren't in the community meeting, so I just want to make sure they know all the ways to provide feedback to the board. So let me uh, let me just show something really quick. Um, just give me one second. Okay, um, just a couple of um, quick uh, updates for people um, so that everyone can fully engage in the process. So I'm just gonna, for members of the public, this presentation is online. Um, so it kind of goes over summary of the review and um, some of the key dates, just as a quick reminder, the next hearing for public testimony is uh, Wednesday, December 16th from seven to nine. Uh, and so we encourage you to participate in that way. Additionally, you can send written feedback to the board. Um, you need to make sure for written feedback that that testimony, oops, sorry, uh, is received by January 8th. Um, when you send that feedback, you are going to send it to, uh, we recommend using the portfolio recommendations um, email address that goes directly to the board. Um, uh, Executive Director Christian Gant manages that. Uh, and so um, that makes sure that those messages go directly to the board. It's not mixed up with the board's regular mail, although you can also use the regular mail if you do. Just in the subject line, make sure you flag that it's about the annual review. So it's given the proper priority and it's not mixed up with um, uh, the everyday mail. Um, and the complete 
uh, recommendations can be found on the district website on the um, annual review page. So I just wanted to make sure people had that um, information. So that's all. Okay, thank you, Ms. Alvarez. Uh, I actually received one final video for the evening and this is uh, from some of the students at Lockerman Bundy. Bundy so I'm gonna share that. Give me one moment. Uh, Matt, uh, Commissioner Richardson? Yes, sir. Uh, this is Vernon. Vernon, Can I say a few comments why Christian's loading this? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I really appreciate Shaquan, Jerome, Patricia, Catherine all for speaking. Uh, but I guess I'd like to impress upon you. It's like we really do care. Kids are our most important resource. And all of us as commissioners really care what's important for the kids. Uh, Angela Alvarez and her group do an extraordinary job. And also uh, Lynette Washington in terms of her group, in terms of Miss Hellman, in terms of buildings. We try our best to make sure that we can use the finite amount of funds we get, which is disturbingly low, to do as much as we can with the children and the buildings. Uh, it's, it's sad to hear the pain that these parents are going through, the kids are going through, but all I'm emphasizing is we as a board, the district office in this area led by Angela Alvarez are doing as much as we can to make sure that the transition's a good one, a fair one, a healthy one, but money is finite and you would be surprised at the lack of funding we get based on our tax base and based on government giving than Baltimore County, Howard County, and Montgomery County get. We do the best we can with the resources we have, but we understand your, your, your cares, we understand your pain, and we do as much as we can to ameliorate that. So thanks for your time, thanks for your comments, but we do care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Commissioner Reed. I appreciate those sentiments. Okay, did any other commissioners have anything to add before I play the video? All right. No, this is um, Bandima, and I think that the Commissioner Reed said everything that needed to be said for the commissioner, but as we were moving through the process, listening to the comments from the parents and the, and the students. I just want to mention something that um, that I, I really do encourage. If um, the parents, in which I'm sure many of them do, would join us at different moments when we go to Annapolis and hear some of the testimony and, and some of the comments and many of the committees and many of the, the meetings that we have with Baltimore City and our parents and our community. And together, you can hear some of the struggles that we have when we ask for funding. And um, we love the students, and that's why we're here. And we're a volunteer board, and we do everything we can with the help, of course, of your Baltimore City Public School staff and our CEO. So I just want you to know that at any moment, any time, please check online and see where we are, where we're going, and join us and let them hear the voices of the parents and the students. Thanks a lot for showing up this evening. And, it, we, and we're paying a lot of attention to what you're saying. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bondima. I'm gonna share the video now. This month at Lockman Bundy for our SEL Spotlight, we have been learning about empathy. We found out that our school may be closing, and this is very difficult for many of us to hear. We would like to take a few moments to share these memories that we would like to continue in our building, which is a second home to us. I heard that one of the reasons for our school closing is because of the condition of, the, of our building. I am proud to say that when you walk into our building, you will be amazed at what you see. We understand that we are all home and separated now because of the pandemic. 
Imagine how it would feel to be separated from our school building when we return next year. Please take our, please take the time out to listen to us with, as we can share our thoughts and feelings about our school so that you can put yourself in our shoes and know how we feel. Our school is amazing. We have amazing staff. They don't just know us by our faces. They take the time out to learn about our strengths and areas that we need to grow in academically and emotionally. They know what we are interested in and are always available for us when we need someone to talk to about our problems. Our teachers keep us safe and show us that they care. One time there was a shooting in our community at this missile and our principal ran over to a group of students to make sure that they were safe. She even became the crossing guard the day, the next day, because we were scared to walk in our dangerous neighborhood. I won't feel safe walking to another school in our neighborhood. Our small building keeps us safe from harm and danger. Marianne once learned may be a larger school than ours, but we are surely have large amount of parents who can come out to support us. I love how our small building always have large events in a cafeteria and gym. We have family activities for us to participate in every month. We have muffins with moms, donuts with dads, granolas and games with grandparents. Math, literally, and science, science nights as well. If black me bunny clothes, I won't be able to sit in the reading corners in the hallway with my mother when she comes to visit or see my multiplication facts with my friends as I walk up our math steps. I had been going to lock me buddy since pre-K and 90% of my classmates are still with me in the fifth grade. I used to be shy. I joined the Bunny Broadcast team, and now I led the morning announcements, and I also play instruments in front of audiences. Can you imagine having all these activities in our building, being taken away? Put yourself in my shoes, or that they were safe. She even became the crossing guard the day, the next day, because we were scared to walk. In our dangerous neighborhood, I won't feel safe walking to another school in our neighborhood. Our small building keeps us safe from harm and danger. Marianne once learned may be a larger school than ours, but we are surely have large amount of parents who can come out to support us. I love how our small building always have large events in a cafeteria and gym. We have family activities for us to participate in every month. We had muffins with moms, donuts with dads, granolas and games with grandparents. Math, literally, and science, science nights as well. If black me bunny clothes, I won't be able to sit in the reading corners in the hallway with my mother when she comes to visit or see my multiplication facts with my friends as I walk up our math steps. I had been going to lock me buddy since pre-K and 90% of my classmates are still with me in the fifth grade. I used to be shy. I joined the Bunny Broadcast team and now I led the morning announcements and I also play instruments in front of audiences. Can you imagine having all these activities in our building being taken away? Put yourself in my shoes. Did you know many elementary schools on the west side of Gardner are being featured on the on the Voice in a Voice in America in six different countries? Every news station in our city newspaper and magazines for the great things that they do. We also created the famous already YouTube video highlighting the amazing Lockman Bunny Building. Did you know that we had many visitors? who not only visit our school once, they visit our school several times because they enjoy all the great things that went inside them, that happened inside of this colorful building. Lieutenant Governor, Lieutenant Governor Ruth for Baltimore Ravens player Matt Jordan and Morgan Ox and the Oreo Bird, Dr. St. Louis. The city's 
the city school CEO, former Mayor Shilu, Shilu Dixon, and the Councilor John Bullock and the late Elijah Cummins. We also had many magazines come to do a feature on our school about bullying prevention and popular celebrities like Paris J from North Carolina, A1 Chops, local DJs, and U.S. Nov Novel Academy menship. They love coming to our school every year to come into our classes, play games with us, and even participate participate in our first African-American Idol as judges. The Naval American Academy Band also visit, visits us in the performance with some of our students who plays instruments. Can you, who play instruments. Can you imagine having a school named that is so popular around the world being taken away from us? Put yourself in our shoes. Thank you for taking the time out to hear on our That is the end of the video. Okay. Oh, okay, yes, that was the end of the video. Uh, back to you, Commissioner Richardson. Thank you, Christian. Um, I wanna ask um, my fellow board commissioners, um, are there any other closing remarks that um, you have um, for tonight? Otherwise, we will we'll end our meeting. Uh, Bundima, thank you very much. No, I don't have any more remarks. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All righty. And I wanted to also acknowledge Martha um, James joined us. Um, I don't see your name right now, but I did see you earlier. Where are you? I'm here. I don't know where oh. I am on your screen, but I'm okay. sitting in my living room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's on the screen. All right. Did you want to share anything before we close out? No, I, I, and other than just to you know, reiterate that this is a really challenging process. Change is always frightening, um, but I would, I would ask people to think about some of the changes we've made over the last five years. And every time we've made the changes, parents and families have come to us and expressed their concerns. And we listen um, and we, we've shifted some of our decisions over time. But four or five years later, three years later, um, things have come to a calm, and I don't think there's anyone that's unhappy with any changes we've made in the long term. So while it's scary and frightening in the immediacy, and we'll do everything we can as a district to support and collaborate with the city to help figure out what's going to happen with these buildings, to give you some answers should we decide to close them, um, that it is, it is also about taking a breath um, and about being robust and healthy for the entire city. So thank you. For everybody who participated and shared your opinions, thank you, Ms. Alvarez, for your work and your team. Um, but no, that's that's where I am. It's hard. It's really hard to do this, um, but it's really necessary. That's so, for the yeah. health system. That's so true. And I want to thank um, the sentiments from all of my fellow commissioners. I want to also echo my appreciation for all of the speakers who came out tonight and from the community, our young people, the videos. Um, as the other commissioners have said, you know, we listen to everybody. Um, we want you to be a part of this process. I know I've been reading some of the chats, so make sure, please make sure that you're a part of these future gatherings so that you can continue to make your voice heard, but then you can also learn about um, what the plans are as we all move forward. And your voice is very important to that. So thank you. I want to wish everyone a good night and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.